Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Pabs, a rising VTuber and an artist. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of character design. So if you've done, if you've been in one of these before, you know how it goes. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what I do here, I'm going to use one of these links here from my search engine, and I'm going to generate three randomized emojis. And based on that, I'll make a brand new character. At least I hope it'll be brand new. It's possible that somebody is, you know. Monkeys at a typewriter and all that. And all that. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? Here we go. Come on. Big money. Big money. No whammies. Oh, this will be interesting. <laughs> all right. We got sheep, snow cone, and tornado. That's going to be interesting. That's gonna. I'm. <laughs> I'm kind of interested. These are juicy. All right. Let's let's pop open Clip Studio Paint real quick, so that we can start doing these. All right, so how do we? Is it possible to use the text function for this? Okay, no, I'll need to use a standard text. So maybe Calibri. Okay, Calibri doesn't like emojis. I'll just zoom in on these a lot and. Take a screenshot and then port them over. That seems like the most sensible course of action. Still though, the this is a this is definitely kind of a weird assortment. I think that I think ice cream cone or I, ice shaped ice cone is really interesting. I mean sheep. I think sheep is gonna be like the dominant one. Whenever we get an animal. Or even if we don't get an animal, usually there's a, like, like a little bit of an animal theme going on, which is interesting. Let me, hang on, let me make this transparent as well. There's a little bit of chromatic ab aberration on these because it's just a really zoomed in screenshot, which is interesting. I kind of like it. Right, there we go. Okay. In terms of what to do next, though, I think what I should do next, just real quick, is actually post the going live notifications. I've noticed that I've been really bad about that recently. I keep forgetting to hit the fucking go live now notifications, like some kind of, like some kind of major league rube. But rest assured, this time I remembered. I promise. <laughs> I promise. I didn't promise anyone. I I promised myself, I suppose. Okay, so... Hmm. What's interesting is going to be incorporating the tornado, because snow cone and tornado don't really mix. Sheep and tornado could be something. Sheep and snow cone is definitely something, but tornado is interesting. Maybe by doing some kind of, like, twistiness. Hmm. Maybe they're one of those storm chaser people. I don't know if that has a significant outfit. Hang on. Storm chaser. Like, I know that storm chasers generally are just, like, insane people. Uh, take a look at this one. <laughs> they just look like regular, regular people and look on the road. Trying to figure out where a tornado is going for fun, questionably. Question mark. That's kind of a fun group pose, though. I, I, I kind of like that one. Hang on. I, we haven't. It's going to bug me if I don't remove that chromatic operation a little bit. Maybe if I sharpen this. Hang on. Or posterize. Oh. All right, I'll just leave it alone then. Okay. What if we combined an ice cream truck with a with a storm chaser van? Do storm chaser vans have like a specific look to them? Hang on. Storm chaser van.
No, they generally just look like normal SUVs. Except for this one. Check this thing out. <laughs> this thing looks like a combine vehicle. Oh yeah, no, I'm very excited to work with these. I feel like this should be in Half-Life 2. Did you know that you can get Half-Life 1 on sale for free on Steam right now? <laughs> That's just a tank. The funniest part is that it doesn't even have front wheels. This is like a trailer hitch. This is like a second, this is like an ad adjunct vehicle, an auxiliary thing. Hang on, let me get a couple more of these. I like the big, I like the big satellite dish on this one. Hang on, ice cream truck. I feel like I, I feel like I don't know if it's because I lived in urban areas more than anything. That'll definitely be safe near a tornado. It'll be great. You can eat a little bit of ice cream while you're waiting out the storm. It, it's fine. You'll be fine. Actually, you know what would be better? Uh, no, I was going to say this one feels like it's more ice cream truckish, but it also looks something about it doesn't seem right. It's a little bit off. Or actually, hang on, paletero. Do you know what a paletero is? It, it, it's like this very distinctly Latin thing about like a, an old peapaw type of dude who carts around this ice cream thing full of ice cream. It's like a little basket that's super well insulated. Dude, these guys are mad popular at the beach. All right, we have that, and we have... I kind of like the idea of him, of this guy being a storm chaser paletero. <laughs> no, hold on, actually, that's kind of sick as fuck. Let's do that. <laughs> and also, there's a sheep there. <laughs> fuck yeah, this is gonna rule. All right, all right, all right. Let's grab the let's grab the heavily armored vehicle too. Why not? <laughs> Actually, uh, I for I know that shaved ice stands are like a thing in Japan. They're also a thing here in the U. Well, I don't live in the U.S., but hang on. Shaved ice stands. Here we go. Ah, oh, dude. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, hang on. This one's also really good. Hang on. Shaved ice and and heavily armored to make sure the snow cones are safe. <laughs> you mean you gotta have it? And with like a little with a shaved ice maker thingy. Yes. Okay. I see the vision. We're we are so in there. Hang on. I gotta check something real quick. Advanced audio properties. Ah, here we go. All right. We are, all right. We are in there. Let's bring all these back in. Let's bring all these into the main. Canvas. Cronk voice. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. This is kind of insane too, actually. These are all like loudspeakers, aren't they? Aren't they? Like they're... This is like the equivalent of, of party bus. I love the... <laughs> I love the Puerto Rican flag there. I think that's Puerto Rico. Let me let me fact check that real quick. I'm about to have a Spider-Man PS2 moment. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 PS, PS5, whatever. Yeah, it's a Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> one for one. God, yeah. Th this, th this thing sounds like a... <laughs> like one of those weather alert f horns. 
Except that it's just playing da-da-da. What is the ice cream song, by the way? I distinctly I know that there's I, like if you played it, I would recognize it, but I don't know what the ice cream song actually is. I don't I don't know that one who's got that one Bardic <laughs> ice cream man track. Oh god, what the hell? Yeah. Is it is it like standardized? Do they have a standard for that? Hang on. Let me let me let me touch with this ice shaver first. Hang on. What's the name of the ice cream truck song? Oh no. Oh no, oh no, 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 oh. Shit. Okay, you're gonna have to Google that one on your own. I can't <laughs> I can't talk about that on stream. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Holy shit. Uh let's switch topics real quick. Uh just real quick, let's switch topics. Um So, fun fact, in <laughs> I learned recently that in the Philippines, there is a restaurant where you can basically sit at the foot of a waterfall. You're, you're like right there near the rushing water of a waterfall. It, it's like this buffet style deal. It sounds super interesting. I, I guess it would have to be buffet style. Like I can't imagine... Like apparently all the food is served on like banana leaves as well so that it's all biodegradable and stuff. I think... Besides, like, the obvious logistical issues of, like, that's the, one of those things that I could never think of, of making myself. Because besides the obvious logistical kind of challenges of it, you designing a menu where you could conceivably say, yeah, we can serve this near falling water that's falling, like, hundreds and thousands of tons per second per gallon. Easy, easy money. But that's what these people did. That's ingenious. Is this okay? I was gonna ask what this white rectangle is. I thought it was. I thought at first it was just a holder for the ice, but I realized that would be weird. Then I thought it might be a mirror so that people can like see their tongues after they eat the shaved ice, but I thought that would also be weird. I realized that it's like a menu. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. It took me like three tries before I realized, oh, that's just probably a pricing thing. <laughs> it's been a long day. I I'm giving myself some grace. God. A little bit embarrassing that it took me uh, that many tries to figure it out. Like, I didn't know what it was at first is the thing. Yeah, let's just grab everything here. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Sometimes you overthink it. Okay. Storm Chaser can go here. The less cool Storm Chasers can go here. Skywarn 7, your weather authority. Huh. I wonder if we'd get in if I'd get in trouble if the news station that owns this van knows that I just ripped into it like that. Like how how many lawyers does Sky Station Skywarn 7 have? Are we talking like a small platoon or just or like a normal sized army of lawyers? <laughs> the news station is writing a call on post as we speak. Now I'm just imagining that that uh, Sonic Live fan dub bit. God, I I I I can't believe I've forgotten the words to that. I would I would I would do a spin on it right now if I remembered the words. Hang on, let me <laughs> look that up.
Hang on. Here we go. I've come... <clears throat> I've come to make an announcement. Pablo Rice is a bitch-ass motherfucker. He copied my fucking van. That's right. He took his stupid f artist fucking pen out, and he, and he plagiarized my fucking van. And he said that his pen was this big. And I said, that's disgusting. <laughs> so I'm making a call-out post on my ex.com. Pablo Riza, you've got a small pen. It's the size of this, of this storm, but way smaller. And guess what? Here's what my storm looks like. That's right, baby. Tall currents, no clouds, no sun. <laughs> Look at that! It looks like it looks like a it looks like two funnels and a cotton ball. <laughs> he copied my van, so guess what? I'm gonna copy his art. That's right. This is what you get. <laughs> my super AI generated art. Anyway, we have a character to design today. I, th I think we hit, I th I kind of I think we lost the plot there a little bit. All right, let's see here. Canvas properties. Let's extend the width of the canvas a little bit so we have some more room to work because I like having this array of references to work with. There we go. That was just part of the process, I think. You know, you might be right. You know, we always treat the artistic process as this thing that has like both its ups and downs, which is absolutely true. But we don't talk about when it kind of goes sideways like that. Huh. Come to think of it, I don't... Does this thing have a touch screen? Or, or maybe that's just a normal screen. It's kind of disturbing how... Greebled, what I assume this fiber I assume that this is fiberglass of some kind, but it's kind of it's kind of off putting how perfect it looks, yeah, the way the speakers like bulge like that it's a little I feel like it's angry at me, I feel like it's giving me <laughs> it's giving me the side eye a little bit it's giving it's giving me the real gimlet eye. Oh, lordy. I wonder what the most insane, like, food truck is in the world. Like, we were talking about that restaurant earlier. Apparently the waterfall is not, like, a natural waterfall, by the way. In, ca in case you were thinking, oh, wait, wouldn't, like, the bacteria from the waterfall be a problem? Uh, it turns out that the waterfall is, uh, is like, this man-made one. It's it's like this runoff from a hydroelectric plant. So it's going to be relatively back low on bacteria, I think. Okay. And then some enterprising individual was like, what if we put a restaurant next to it? And then he made all the money in the world. But yeah. Hmm. I remember seeing this one once upon a time. This, like, it looked like a pig's nose. Hang on. Uh, metal pig food truck. It looked like something out of, like, a, like a, a Mario. <laughs> if Mario Kart had bosses, it would look like this. Oh, here we go. The Maximus Minimus Food Truck. Based in Seattle, Washington, it was established by Kurt Beecher Damier in June 2009, and the truck was designed by Colin Reedy. The truck was built to resemble a pig and has metallic enhancements that resemble a pig's snout and ears. The truck often parked at 6th Avenue and Pike Street in downtown Seattle and at festivals at farmers markets. God. It is a shame that apparently it's no longer opening anymore.
Yeah, ap apparently this thing is no longer operational, which is a damn shame. We need more Mac Mad Max shit like this any as well. It's not fair that we get, like, five different apocalypses going on at the same time and we don't get any cool Mad Max shit out of it. We need to capitalize on, on that more. We're not making the most of it. I kind of like this little old man here doing the the paletero stunts. I kind of like the idea of making of making them like a little fat old elderly person. Definitely got to have the the <laughs> Fanny pack. I, I keep forgetting the name of that in English. I, I don't know the name of it in Spanish either. It's not a word that comes up often enough that we need to know it. Actually, since we're, we, we still need to include the sheep stuff, right? Let's make this guy kind of like sheep themed. Here we go. Yeah, we, we, we need to touch on that a little bit. I was thinking of just using like little fluffy parts here and there, but I feel like that's doing a disservice to the possible concept. What if we, okay, what if we made his face, their face long? I, I keep saying he, I kind of want to make it make it a woman. I don't. I'm not. I'm not entirely sold on either or just yet. Highland sheep are are very fun. Oh, is that is that what these are? Hang on, let me Google that. What the? What? Yo, this motherfucker bright orange. They toss his ass in Cheetos. I open up a bag of I open up a bag of Doritos and this dude is just chilling. <laughs> that is crazy. I like that though. Hang on, we gotta we gotta we gotta get that into the fold there. All right, we're 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 working with a lot here. That's good. That that gives us space to trim out is the thing. We don't talk about it enough. As much as I love like maximalist stuff, well no, I don't actually like maximalist stuff. I'm more of a minimalist myself. It's important to have as much as as what you're bringing in. It's also important to have things you can cut out. I'm kind of picturing that that one dude from that early arc of One Piece that the ship is themed after. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Hi Emerald. Let me get a let me get one of those beasts in here. Let's give her a big old nose, too. How's it going? Good. We have a bunch of different references together. Uh, let me put the emojis that we're using up here at top so that we can easily see them at any time. We got a sheep, a snow cone, and a tornado. So we're making a kind of paletero storm chaser. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited for this concept.
Are there any elderly storm chasers? Like I, 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 obviously you would think that that's like a young man's game, but are, hang on, elderly oldest storm chaser. Hang on. Okay, there was Sim Samaras who is no longer with us. Yeah, veteran storm chasers. You think it was the domain of the young and foolish who think they're invincible? Hmm. Okay. Okay, wow. Tim Samaras is 55 when he um, was involved in his last tornado chase. There are some old folks who still have that zest for adventure and foolishness. Oof, yeah. Here's a picture of him. All right, let's see. Okay, so 55, though. That's definitely, like, gray hair territory, I think. I mean, gray hairs aren't really... The thing about gray hair is that the, is that it's not really indicative of age as much as we'd expect because of the fact that anybody can get a gray hairs whenever. I remember I had a classmate of mine who used to have this shock of like white hair for no discernible reason. It wasn't like chemically induced. It wasn't like because of like anything that he could uh, figure out. It just appeared one day and it didn't leave and nobody knew why, where it came from or why. It does, however, mean they're cool as hell. <laughs> That's true. Being able to survive on Earth until your old age is kind of hardcore. Not gonna lie. Hmm. Do we give them a hat? Hang on. I kind of wanted to give them, like, a tennis visor. But I think having giving them like a cowboy hat is a little bit better because I feel like that's that kind of communicates more adventurous spirit. I missed a work look, but my sentence still <laughs> correct. Woo! Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think definitely giving them like this Ecuadorian hat. Some people call it like a Panama hat. Most of them were made in Ecuador, by the way. By the fucking way. <laughs> Hmm. And it kind of works on uh, another level, too, because the sheep horns are curved like that, huh? This motherfucker has to watch his head when he goes through doorways. <laughs> Remember that you are also cool. Thank you. Thank you for the bit. All right. We might need to to lower the width of the... Oh, my God. What if it was like a... No. No, we can't give him a bowler hat. That kind of... That communicates like a different thing, I feel. Hmm. As for hair, how do we simulate this kind of... Bowler is too spy, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a little... When you put on your hat and have to fit your giant horns through it. Oh my god, that would be so difficult with the, with these horns, though. Maybe the hat has some kind of, like, flap. We can give it near, the t near up front here. Yeah. Okay, how do we give it this luscious, weirdly orange mane? It's got Velcro. <laughs> also, to keep it from flying away. Oh, you are so smart. That is a perfect reason why they why they have the hat like over their horns. Let me.
Let me widen the mouth a little bit. Okay, for the ears, we can do kind of droopy-ish ears. What We can do a little bit of kind of like pointy ears with a little bit more on the lobe part. I had with Velcro is funnier than latches or belts. Mm. Yeah, in that case, we can remove the buttons here. I need to shrink this eye a little bit. Okay. What's he got on? Is that okay? That's a little cross necklace. That does. That also doesn't seem out of place because of the fa because of just the dangers involved with tornado hunting. Okay, let me put this like so, so that it's a little bit more in perspective. Velcro is always a little bit funny for some reason. I think it's because of how like obnoxious it can be. Loose jewelry is not the most suited for the job. That's true. Hmm. I kind of want them to have a small apron too. I'll figure out the hair in just a minute. Or they can be bald. Whatever. And actually, maybe they should have a pretty long neck, too. Slightly monster-like. Hmm. I feel, I feel like giving them too long of a neck gives them more Apaka vibes than Sheep vibes. Which isn't bad, but it's not what we're trying to go for here. Hang on, Highland Sheep Wool. Let me take a look here. Okay. Interesting. Check this out. <laughs> I kind I kind of like the, the before and afterness of this picture. It, it the way that it's posed together, it feels a little bit like when you when you and your sibling are posed together for like a picture on your first day of school, and like one of you just got into the worst accident the day before. Like like this one look this one just shaved its brothers. <laughs> chest area for no reason <laughs> that's funny all right i have a better idea for how to do the hair now though do i want to give them a rat tail that'll be so that would be Interesting for like the wind stuff. I kind of want to make their face area smaller too. Not their head, but their face area. That's a little too small. We can, we can do a little bigger. Yeah, that looks a little bit more natural. After that, though, maybe some kind of scarf or maybe may like even a turtleneck or something. No, that would 
That clashes a little bit with the summeriness of like the shaved ice. I did say I wanted to put them in an apron. You know, they take the apron off whenever it's time to get to get to chasing the storm. What's like a good Hawaiian shirt? I need to put this this person in a Hawaiian shirt like right now, or like or a flower shirt or a floor pattern shirt, what wh whatever you may call it. Oh yeah, here we go. Hmm. This guy is wearing jeans, and I like that idea. Kind of mom jeans vibe, though. I think I think I might actually really be cooking here. Hang on. <laughs> what if you just met the most buff stacked lady in her pushing 50 that you've ever met in your life and she and you suddenly you get like a tornado alert on your phone and her ears twitch like a dog. <laughs> Dude that <laughs> The more I make this person, the more I like her. She's simply too powerful for the tornado. Crocs? That is a sick idea, but I like it. I do need to make her torso a little bit longer. Made her her midriff a little bit wider too. We need to make this woman as powerful as possible, or else she will not survive the storms. Cowboy hat, Hawaiian sh Hawaiian shirt. The doctor, the doctor style Crocs that don't have holes. Ooh, weren't there like steel toe Crocs? Hang on. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. There. Okay, so this is like the post that I that I was thinking about, but there are actual genuine steel Croc toes, steel toe Crocs out there. I think. Hang on. Please, please. Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Men or, men or women kitchen and chef shoes safety, and safety working steel toe clog. Okay, hang on. Kitchen steel toe shoe. Clog. It's real. Oh my god. We are so in here. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god. I think this is too beautiful for like a mortal people to witness. I feel like I'm learning a lot too. I've never thought of my streams as a place for education. At least not in the conventional sense.
Okay. We'll use an actual pose for these once we have it ready. Oh, we are we're making the most powerful person on earth. We need to in, involve some more of the sheep stuff though. And some of the mo some of the other stuff too. Hold on. Birthday boy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so good so far. Hey Jupiter. I don't want to make her chubbier too. Just really build her like a tank. What what kind of equipment do storm chasers normally carry? Like what would what, what would be something that somebody would hold and they'd instantly think that's somebody who chases storms right there? Ham radio gear, laptops, video cameras, still cameras, tripod, laptop mount, mobile internet, smartphone apps. Okay. Storm chaser hand camera. Yeah, camera is feels like a pretty good one. Yeah, like maybe one of those old handheld cameras. Okay, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I saw this picture here and instantly thought of the low tier god meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the most iconic bit is this is van, but I do think we are going to turn the paletero stand into the van as a thing. 80s hand camera. Hand video camera. Hang on. Yeah, you gotta have all the equipment on us on stand, that's true. I kind of dig this one. Ooh. What must a storm ch chaser have? Unreasonable confidence. <laughs> um, that's true as well. This one too. I think of all of them, this one is the one that seeks to me the most. Like this one, I'm having trouble picturing how to make work. With that outfit, I think she's got it. That's true. Oh god, the steel toe croc jump scare. We can close these. <laughs> nice rugged pair of steel toe crocs. Only wore to work one day, got fired. <laughs> I want to imagine it's for un croc unrelated reasons. $200 to best over 100 <laughs> Christ alive. Hello, Highland Sheep. Hello, Storm Chaser guy. Hello, Highland Sheep again. Hello, Maximus Minimus. Holding a wind sensor on a stick like a commanding wizard. Hang on, wind sensor. Holy shit. Yo, you guys need to look at this thing. Is it? We are straight up looking at some contraptions in here. Look at this fucking thing. NASA Marine Limited. All right, all right. This is kind of more our speed. Isn't there something like that in Don't Starve? Probably. I like this one, though. I like this one. Hang on. I like the idea of having the wind sensor just on the paletero stand. Like, if it breaks off, you know you're close. <laughs> yeah! Put one of these on the camera. Hold on, do, do we have the camera still? Where's the camera? Oh, here it is. Perfect. All right. What else do storm chasers have besides unreasonable confidence and cameras? 
maybe like a crappy cheap laptop. Hang on, I had a ancient look, a kind of like ancient Dell laptop from like 2003 when I was a kid. I, I inherited it from my dad once he, so he he upgraded his work computer to like an actual workable PC. So so he let me stick around with like the old one, and I remember that thing being basically indestructible. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, never mind. This one this one might even be better. Oh my god, with Warcraft loaded on there? Come on. Come on, brother. We have to get that. On the stand too. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Okay, and the last one was like a was like a ham radio. I've seen those in Fallout, but I forgot what they looked like. Maybe we can just have some kind of powered up walkie-talkie on there. Or maybe whatever the fuck this thing is. Hang on. Why isn't it letting me... Whatever, I'm copying and pasting you. Oh, it's because I had that up. Okay. I feel so good about this. <laughs> Sometimes when I make something on stream, I'm like, should I really do this? But but today I feel I'm feeling very confident in my own in my life decisions. I'm happy I'm happy I've taken the the, the routes that led me here. I make her even like. There we go. Yep, with a rolled up sleeves, maybe slightly hairy arms. Dude, this lady would kick so much ass if you knew her in real life. I want to meet this woman in real. Okay. We need to have, okay, we might also need like a logo for the stand that she's running. I I pulled up this one here for the character for Ice which is like Hang on. It's basically just that, right? Yeah. Is there a way we can... Okay, what's... Okay, we know that this is the character for Ice. What is the character for Sheep again? Kanji for Sheep. I Wait, no, I remember it. It's something like this, isn't it? It's... I remember it being very similar to that. Hang on. Kanji for sheep. Oh, so close. I was missing just one stroke. I got really close, though. I remember it had the two little horns here. <laughs> Hmm. The purchasing power of the sheep. That's right. I also like the fact that this guy has bells on him, <clears throat> on his ice cream tro on his ice cream trolley. We should do that too for ours. Okay, we'll give her, like, some black nitrite gloves. Because, you know, food service industry. Hmm.
It's weird that I haven't rethought the steel toe crocs even once throughout all this, by the way. We're, we're right or die with these things. Would you wear them in speed mode or in safety mode? Or like in casual mode, I mean. I feel like casual mode. I, I feel like that's like the sign that she's about to start uh, to start gunning for the tornadoes, that her ears will perk up and that she'll switch the crocs to like speed mode. <laughs> Yeah, I th I think I think we're gonna depict her like r before a storm hits. We're we're not gonna get her like mid storm, or maybe we should actually. Hmm. Okay, then like down, and then like this. Yeah, let's not get too complicated, though. As for the... Hmm... I feel like she's still missing something. I feel like there's not some, there might be something we're not doing properly. Like we can put the the different kanji for up here, but maybe just a quick little bit of logo design. Okay. Actually, this synergizes as well with an idea that I had a long time ago. I had an idea for a character who was like constantly, who had like a power, right, over weather. But the trade back was that they were constantly chased by a powerful storm and they couldn't stay in one place for too long or else the storm would catch up. And the logo that I made for them was this kind of spinning circle with like a 13 in the middle for bad luck. So maybe we can kind of combine... Let me put all the references into one folder so we can drag them around easily. The thing is, I would love to use... Wait, no, hang on. What's the Baskin-Robbins logo? I'm about to do a little bit of plagiarism. Okay, they have a thir and 31. We can do a 13. <laughs> we are so in here. And actually, you know what else I kind of want in there? I remember that all the baleteros from uh, my neighborhood used to have a... Whatchamacall? Helados Pinguinos. There, there was like this brand called Pinguino, which I'm pretty sure is like mostly Ecuadorian, funnily enough. There we go. This is the logo for it. Let's see if we can't do a little something something with this. Okay. Okay, we 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 can do a little bit of mix and match with the logo. Okay, so this okay, so this has one curve here and then it goes outward. Then
May we turn the Pinguino one on its side? Hmm. Nah. Okay, then we add the arrows. Okay, making it more rounded in the next iteration. I like the little sheep head here. This shoe is way too big. We can switch that up real quick. We're not on the right layer, but that's fine. All right, let's make this one a little bit stubbier and maybe a little smaller. Ditto for this one, I think. Now maybe make this one a little wider. Track this one back. Ankles exposed, how scandalous. <laughs> Okay, and then another one over here. Okay, and then a third, the three back here. Okay, I think this one works a little bit better than... Hang on, and then we have a couple little hooves right up here at front. Yes, that is so cute. Okay, we have a logo design. Okay, then me a little bit. Uh, we did say fanny pack. We did. I did. I did promise the people a fanny pack. Yes. <laughs> I love. I there. I get like a twisted kind of sense of satisfaction from giving characters like a, a like what's conventionally considered like a lame piece of clothing, like a fanny pack. Right, like because people think that fanny packs are lame. They're very utilitarian, but they're but they're. I feel like a lot of people consider them like unsightly for some reason. So I love making charming character designs with those same unsightly things. I'm like sicko's yes voice over them. <laughs> okay. We can actually do a, sh a sheep design for the floral pattern as well. I know how to make a very quick repeating logo, so we can do that. Would leg warmers be too much? Yeah, that's a little bit too much. But we maybe we can do a little bit of wool trim on the shoes. Okay, and on the gl on the gloves, maybe the gloves. Yeah, why not?
now it all comes together. I did, I did feel like the hair was missing a little bit of something, so I, I just added more. <laughs> and maybe we can have the... the knot from the... apron be the tail. Like I said, it's always useful when I get like an animal themed one because that gives a very strong identity already. Like we actually got like a real bag of winners this time around. It it like it's in, it's insane how hard I feel like I'm winning it right now at art. I'm getting a rush from this. I really am. Okay, now we need to draw the actual truck that she... Well, not truck, the little stand that she drives. So let's get a couple of these out of the way. Oh, we have a lot, huh? Okay, we need that one. We need that one. Uh, Yeah, we need these. We don't need that one. We don't need this one. We don't need this one. We don't need... We that we kind of need that one. We need that one. We definitely need that one. We could use that one. We need that one. Okay, I think I think I think we're all we've left all the kind of needed ones. I'm so excited for the stand. Me when I when I'm following the newest <laughs> the newest uh, chapter in JoJo. <laughs> Me when I'm some teenager in a small town in Japan and I find a golden looking arrow. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So I think the main thing for this one is copying the wheels of the truck, which is useful because this one already has very sturdy looking wheels. This one is... Both of these are three-wheeled vehicles, but this one has one wheel at the back, while this one has one wheel at the front. I kind of like the idea of making it a bike. Maybe even like a moped. Hang on. Moped back. Like one of those e-bike things. I used to live in a place that had a ton of these roaming around. They they sneak up on you because sometimes the people who drive them also drive on the sidewalk. <laughs> it gets a little crazy. Okay. So if we grab the Storm Chaser car, which is one of these. New. This one? Yes. All right, we grab that. We can see that it has kind of a vaguely hexagonal shape. It's got one of those cow catcher things. Cow? Is that what they're called? Cow catchers? I feel like that's what they're called on trains. Yeah, no, they're called cow catchers. All right, here we go. Okay. Then... And it has a flat top. I feel like the flat top is a very important part of the Baladero thing. 
So I think maybe if we have it flip open on one side. What else is on here? Okay, he's got two little latches here for each of the trays. So maybe that's how we do it as well. We split the we split this into latch one and latch two. Oh, and Ad is gonna start soon, so duck your heads. Alright. Let's see. One here, and then we'll need another one back here. I feel like these need to be almost like a like a hermetic bunker or something. <laughs> Okay. Then go over like this. Do not shrink that selected area. Thank you very much. Hmm. How do I make this also sheep based? Make it the. <laughs> Fuck it, we give the ice cream truck horns, too. Why not? They have little bells on them. Little, little dangly sheep bells. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, and then, perfect, okay. They'll, they'll have the big wheels right out of here. Tank treads, question mark? I feel like tank treads would be too much. I mean, a lot. This is already kind of a lot. So I feel like tank treads wouldn't be completely out of the question, but I feel like it's maybe a little, it's maybe a little pushing it. Okay. Now they need to be a little further up is the thing. They're kind of right in the middle here. And on this one, they're also kind of like further up. I could just have them be under it, but that seems a little lame. It's a little whack. I also like the idea of just having an actual genuine cow catcher up here. This is, this is, I, we need to paint this in like as bright of a colors as we can find. Otherwise it's going to be terrifying to children. <laughs> My God. Or maybe kids will think it's cool and they'll come more. I don't know. Maybe the answer is to extend the body a little bit. Okay, we grab this, and we just kind of pull towards the back. Ooh, that's doing some real stuff. Um, that's doing some real damage to the roof there. Yeah, we might have to clean this up a little before we <laughs> finalize it. That's all right. I kind of want to take my time with this one. We can go a little longer than usual today. I don't mind for this. All right, let's turn off parts of these. 
that we can kind of get a better look at what we're doing ourselves. I'll give this back for a second so I can re-examine this one. I'm wondering why it looks natural on this, but not on this. I think I know what we need. I need we need kind of like these mud flap things. Those aren't actual mud flaps, but but I have an idea that actually I think we should add those in retrospect. There we go. This thing looks so Mad Max, it's a kind of insane. We should give it like a little umbrella too, why not? We need to use a little bit of mesh transformation on this sucker. Hmm. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, we can get rid of the moped reference for there from there for the time being. Okay, what else? Do they have a fucking gunner's rack up here? What is that? <laughs> I'm only just noticing the dome. <laughs> you are sick in the hut for this. All right. Moving on. Okay, so this one has a little umbrella coming out of the middle. I like the idea of the umbrella, too. Let's shrink this guy down. Let me... Hang on. First, let's... Do it like this. Because when you do it like this and then you touch it like that, then you do it like this and you do it right back. Come on. Because, yeah, an umbrella is what you want to bring into a live tornado. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Same brain moment. All right. Okay, we can have, all right, let me, I want to take a closer look at these latches. I we'll need to do a couple of ice creams here on the sides too. Okay, we'll have like the cone one. We'll have an ice cream sandwich. I'm gonna put myself on there too as like a fucked up looking ice cream sandwich thing. Actually, I'm gonna move the second, the lesser ice cream sandwich here and I'm gonna put myself up there. I deserve to be up there. <laughs> I remember in Jupiter streams one time they made like a food menu and they made they turned me into a gulab jamun. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of into that idea, but I but I, but nothing beats like the messed up. We'll have the two gumballs be like my teeth, and then the rest can be just ordinary. Bam, bam, bam. 
Yeah, we're not going to get to see it in all its glory. Just yet. God, you see this thing approaching you in traffic. You wanna, you're, you're gonna wanna shift lanes real quick. I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be great for making time. All right, there we go. May a tiny little wheel up front? Nah. God, with her behind it, the sheer power, you just see the most massive woman in your life. And, you, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, forget a defensive driving course. That's really all you need to learn how to drive safely. Have the most intimidating looking woman. Well, she's not that intimidating, actually. She looks very friendly. Which is funny, considering how terrifying she actually is. <laughs> Hang on. I think this is where we put the speakers. Or maybe at least, like, I don't know, maybe some more bells? I feel like now that I've opened up this part, we need to have something there. Maybe, like, a little horn right up, right up front here, like this. Okay, then we switch it up like this. Hmm. No, I feel like we can incorporate the sheep stuff here a little bit more. What if we? What if instead of like the cow catcher kind of mesh that we normally have, we have some kind of. Some kind of fluffy dice thing. Is there like fur trim on the outside of cars normally? There isn't, right? Like I imagine that would get polluted, that would get dirty very fast, but this is fantasy world. There we go. Hmm. And then maybe the little thingy here. There we go. The contraption up here. Wait, no, this would be the opposite way around. No, wait. No, hold up. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> okay. Yep. And then like this. There we go. That was what was throwing me off. I forgot what directions are for a minute. It's fine. It happens. Actually, for the longest time, I didn't understand. Maybe it's because I didn't understand it in my first language. I had a really... It took me a long, long time to figure out what left and right is. Like, I, I have a really good sense of direction, but I had a really hard time figuring out consistently, like, if I wanted to say, oh, I need to go left. I mean, I, I want to go right. You know, I had, I had that going on for a very long time. Okay, we'll have that there. We'll have a kind of computer right here. Perfectly normal thing to have behind the wheel, by the way. That would have been like a normal satire type joke to make like 10 years ago. But now there really is a computer like right in front of our screens as in front of our faces as we drive like 24 seven now. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. 
I mean, they're not they're not like laptops as a thing. They're touch screen, <laughs> so it's a little it's just slightly different. <laughs> we'll just bolt this thing on here. Who cares? Okay, and we'll have the ham radio right here. There we go. I'll have a, look, a couple little dials booking, booking out here for the enrichment. Okay. Do we need anything else? Maybe stripes on the umbrella, but... <laughs> hmm. She could be holding a video camera, but I think maybe we can tuck that away back here. I also wanted to include a shaved ice thing, but I think now we're a little bit too deep into the... Well... Hmm. Okay. So maybe instead of having two, la two hatches, maybe we have the flavorings. Let me get all this other crap out of the way real quick. Maybe we have all the flavorings up here. We have the ice making machine. We're running out of space on this thing, which is kind of incredible given how bulky all it already is. Hmm. What's like what's like a, a portable snow cone machine look like? Hmm, okay. Food cart shaved ice machine. Okay, so it genuinely just looks like that. Wait a minute. Is this just the same reference, but from the back? Oh my god, it totally is! <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome. Be gone with you, Baskin Robbins. That's crazy, though. <laughs> okay, that's really fun. In any case, okay, the ice maker just looks like a block machine, which isn't particularly innovative, but we can combine it with the laptop back here. Hang on, maybe on this one we can put the kanji for ice. We'll have Frosty the Snowman be the mascot. Fuck it. But then where do we put the laptop? Maybe we... Oh my god, what if we, we kind of like... I cringe whenever I see people do this. But do you know those like super bendy laptops that you can like turn into a tablet? What if she just has it permanently in that state right here? And she just flips it open whenever she needs it. Oh my god. <laughs> that would be terrifying. I love it. Let's do that.
I like the idea of some kid just going up to give her her give her a change or something to pay for the ice cream, and she's like, and they're like, Auntie, what does that what does that big green rotating circle mean on that on your computer there? And she's like, that means Auntie has to go to go to work, and it also means you should probably find shelter underground for the next thirty minutes. Be good, kids. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a bitch to line art. I'm not going to lie, but it's going to be so worth it. Hang on. Wrong, wrong layer. She's almost as tall as the truck, which somehow seems fitting. All right, hang on. I gotta. I gotta figure out my proportions here a little bit. Her feet are a little bit big. I gotta shrink those down just a t just a hair. I feel like I've just accidentally made an Ark Knights character. Is that weird that I feel like that? <laughs> like, it feels like I've made an Ark Knights character. <laughs> I say this with pride. Okay. I'm going to take a quick sip of water here. Uh, all right, water sipped. Okay. How do I get the sheep logo a little bit less in the frame? <clears throat> all right, I gotta make this look as unfucked as possible. <laughs> it's a rather crass way to put it, but that's the best way I can, I can describe it. <clears throat> Okay. Sheep. Hey, Cypress. We've accidentally made an Ark Knights character. <laughs> but I feel very proud of her. Big ol' schnoz. Few wrinkles here and there. Okay, and then... I think it's goats who have to slit pupils like that, right? All right. Mouth here. Tongue here.
then a little bit of fluff right here. A little bit of fluff back here. A little bit here and there. Okay. I need to lower my pen thickness just a tiny bit. Because I feel like these, I'm going a little bit too hard on these curves. All right. Oh, no, wait, hang on. That's not how hair works. I'm not going to lie. I actually like making really powerful old lady characters. I don't know if it's because my own grandma was kind of a fighter, but <laughs> I don't know. I also have like an, a, nor a normal OC of mine called Thass, who is also just like a tremendously powerful grandma. <laughs> There's something very good about him. You don't get to be a little old lady in a fantasy world by being easy to kill is a thing. <laughs> I guess the implication of this one is that she lives in an area that has enough regular catastrophic wind activity that she can essentially double pull double duty as like the town Paletero and Paletera and the town wind chaser. Okay, just a little bit of fluff on the knot here for the waist. Okay. This is the easy part, by the way. When we start line editing the card, I, I, I fully expect to curse myself out for making it that complicated. <laughs> That's a problem for future paths, though. Take that one to the bank. Let's see. Fluffy on the arm sleeves. Nah, I think those should be, just be normal rolled up sleeves. I think there's a certain charm to that. I don't know why I made her that jacked. I don't know if she needs to be that jacked to run a motorized ice cream truck or a shaved ice truck. I don't know. Are Panateros actually like secretly buff? It's to make help her make her immune to tornadoes. <laughs> now I'm just imagining some dude in the middle of like a level five hurricane emergency at the bottom of a gold ship, just pumping iron like crazy that, so that he'll be immune to tornadoes. <laughs> can't can't get me if I'm too beefy. Can't get me if I'm too beefy. <laughs> He's just like doing sets upon sets upon sets. <laughs> Five days later, they find his perfectly preserved body striking the most perfect, like, bicep curl. <laughs> and they are able to successfully resuscitate him. 
he he becomes like the first successful cryogenics person, but except that instead of cryogenics, it's whatever the fuck muscle building does. That old fuddy duddy Walt Disney should have tried pumping iron instead of trying of doing whatever the fuck with cryogenics. Walt Disney being cryogenically frozen is a myth, right? Like I, I I remember that being like an urban legend, but that is like an urban legend, right? It's not like an actual thing that happened. God, I hope not. No, it definitely has to be an urban legend because I feel like somebody would have tried to make a relic out of his corpse by now. Some sick and twisted student from like SVA or some shit would have tried to like turn his turn his body into a concoction. It is a legend that he's frozen in the service tunnels of Disneyland. Ah, okay. Actually, she needs bigger lats in order for the shoulder structure to make sense. God bless. Stop praying for my grandma. You're making her too strong. <laughs> No. Long soul brother. Okay, here we go. Let me make the little class for the whatchamacallit. I should finish the hat first. Okay, so we agreed on the Velcro for the hat. So I think the best way to do that is to have a big old thing right here in the middle. And then have like a little Velcro strap thing right here. And fuck it, one more sheep up here too. Why not? We we'll already have like 50 in here. One more won't hurt. And <laughs> yeah, in case you missed all the other cues, here's one more. I do kind of want to give her, because of the Highland Sheeps being like radioactive Cheeto dust orange, I do kind of want to give her like a kind of crappy dye job too. Okay, then one more up here. There we go. And so then it would come undone. Like that. Okay, yeah. Let's go. All right. Hmm. I do wonder if I should do something else with her arms. Because... Okay, maybe this one can be holding an actual snow cone. Why not? You know, kind of holding it up like this, like, get it? There we go. Kind 
God, the wool, the woolen lining on the black nitrite gloves goes kind of crazy, though. All right, I'll figure out the actual hand thing later, but maybe she can hold a spoon in this hand. I do wonder if they have like wool, if they do sell like nitrate gloves with like linings, right? Because I, I reckon that might be useful for like some lab contexts or they need a little something extra in there to, you know, preserve the user's hands. I don't know. I feel like if you're in the context where you could, where gloves are useful, you can probably also control the temperature to, to a limited degree. So I don't know what the kind of market is for that. It could just be like a market for sickos, like a very niche market. But like, I'm having a, pic I'm having a hard time picturing a scenario where you would need sterile, sterile gloves, but you don't also have access to like a thermometer. I wonder if such a scenario exists. Recently, I learned that you don't actually need to have... All right, so hear me out, right? It turns out that if it's, a, it's like an emergency where you're losing more blood than your body can actually generate. You don't actually need to worry too much about whatever blood type is going into you. Because like what happens is if you end up... Like if you end up flushing out all the blood, if you end up hemorrhaging out all the blood that they're giving you, if you're just kind of going through it, faster than you, your body can produce it. It's fine to just give you whatever the fuck they've got on hand. It's only really the first and last transfusions that need your specific blood type, because otherwise you're fine. You know, be, because otherwise you're just like putting, uh, put, you're just spilling so much blood that it's not really necessary to worry about your type. Yeah, just cycling the blood. Exactly. I found that super cool, to be honest. Comforting more, like, I don't actually know my own blood type. It's written down somewhere, but I don't actually know my own blood type. Off the top of my head. I should probably get that checked at some point. I remember probably being, like, O positive or something. It's very likely to be O positive, not only because it's the most common blood type in the world, but also because apparently, like, f in ter like, Latin American people tend to have the highest amount of it. Like, it's the most common Latin American one. It's just a factor of Pab's fact. This, this is an actual fa fact. Like, this is like a genuine... I'm telling the whole truth here. I am... This, this isn't like a fun... This isn't like a bit. I'm not lying to you about blood. <laughs> about the, like, blood cycling thing. That that one was that one was a truth. That was that one was not a TM Pabs fact, also called a lie, <laughs> and or a, a bit. <laughs> yeah, just put it in. You live. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, now apparently Latino Latinos actually have like the highest amount of O positive blood, according to this one website I looked at. Hang on. Let me extend this arm a little bit. I've I've accidentally kind of given her Luke Street Fighter type arms. So I need to kind of tone that down a little. I didn't notice it until much later in my life cycle as an artist, but I, I tend to over-exaggerate the arms and shoulders for some reason. I thought it, for Luke, if it, was, if it wasn't arm day, it was always for arm day. <laughs> God. It really is incredible how much everybody's warmed up to Luke. I remember everybody being like kind of if you'll forgive the pun, lukewarm on him. <laughs> but now, but now he, people like him a lot, and it's good. It's good when characters are liked. 
I don't, it, it's always a bit bad, not bad, but like, it's always a, a little tough to see whenever a character is like beloathed if it, if for like a design or something like that, you know, because somebody put, somebody, you know, somebody put work into that. Somebody, that's somebody's baby right there. Like I saw his Street Fighter V design and it did look a little serial killer-y, I'm not going to lie. It, it put me off my lunch. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that Street Fighter Six has had like pretty much banger designs all around. Okay, just a little thing up here. I mean, that being said, even though the even though the design is good. It still has some goofy elements, like for example, the aforementioned arms. Or the aforementioned four arms. Okay, this other pocket down here. How do I draw fingers again? Shit. <laughs> it might be Jover. <laughs> Let me just make the cup first, and then we'll worry about the fingers. Okay, let's erase that part. I'll, I'll make a nice crisp version of the store's logo in just a minute. Okay. Okay, we'll put the pinky right here. We'll put the middle finger around here. This would be the ring finger, actually. I remember how to count. Then... No, that doesn't work, actually. Hang on. We need to make... We need to put this further up. A little bit more. Yeah, okay. Okay, erase these parts here. Clean it up nice and nice, nice and tight. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a little bit lazy with the fingers here. That's fine. And then the last one right here. Okay, and then now we have a little bit more structure. Check this out. Bone rearranging technique. Okay, erase this part, extend this part again so that we can complete the line. There we go, that's like an approximation of a hand. That'll pass. <laughs> okay. The fluffy things back here for the apron ties, for the apron knot. A little bit of arm hair here and there.
Hmm. That looks those look a little bit like wounds. So I think I'll just do the arm hair with the coloring on the coloring layer. Okay, then we will do the legs. And then we'll do the cart. We've got a ways to go here. We also need to do the logo too, but that's fine. That'll take like five minutes. It's fine. I'll just use my secret technique of, of doing it sloppy style. That's not really a secret technique. That's just, that, it's more, that's more like a crunch technique, but that's fine. Okay. The thing is, like, I don't think it's true that crunch produces sloppy work. Like, it does. But the work might not look sloppy at first. Simplify this line. Like, in a lot of cases, it just looks like the work you'd see normally, but it's only if you try to look a little bit under the cracks, you start to see where the stress kind of went. I need to simplify it a little less. May three, three pips. Yeah, there we go. That's, yeah, that's much better. Okay. The glorious battle hardened steel toe crocs. There's, I think I actually saw the steel toe crocs on like that one Tumblr blog that's like ra random item drop. I would love to see somebody try and work that into a Dungeons and Dragons campaign or something. You you see you see the Lord of the Land standing before you, but on clawed upon his feet at a very curious pair of clogs, rubbery and. Steel toed. Somebody rolls a charisma check. I go, what are those? <laughs> okay, we'll make the ankle bone on one of the, on this outer one, not on this inner one. Saying a lot of words salad with those. <laughs> God. Then over here. What if one what if you were like in a post apocalyptic survivor situation? And you saw that, like the the kind of immortal Joe of your group, the kind of hu the hu humongous or Lord Humongous, or was his name just Lord Humongous in that second movie? Yeah, I think it was the Lord Humongous of your group. Do just does look like a normal, you know, typical kind of BDSM getup, but he also inexplicably just wears the steel toe Crocs. How do you how do you open with that, <laughs> Lord Humongous? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. I still really like, um, I think my favorite of the, you know, Beyond Thunderdome has a lot of good parts, but I do still think it's the second Mad Max movie that was my favorite. You have to either respect him or kill him. That's a test of loyalty for you. That's like your initiation, right? You have to sit through an entire meeting with the boss and not once mention his choice of footwear. Complimented or dissed, both of those get you killed. But if you just manage to keep a calm, analytic neutrality. He he lets you into his group. It's like his way of assessing how well you do in like stressful, unfamiliar situations. 
if you immediately try to like flatter him, that means that you're not loyal. That means that you'll just that if you if something catches you by surprise, you are too nurturing. You're you kind of fawn over whatever whatever comes your way. So instead of what you need to do is just maintain an analytical look, neither giving them favor nor really granting them disfavor. A fun challenge every day at work. Yeah, that's how he checks it up too. Like in instead of like a <laughs> instead of like quarterly personnel reviews, he just switches it up. He he just debuts a new thing at random each quarter and he doesn't tell you when he's going to do it. It's not like on a schedule. But like one day you see him like wearing a a pink flamingo on a tutu and you'll have to like clench your teeth and and bite your tongue. <laughs> There we go. He has access to power and water. Just bear it. Bro, do not blow this for us. Now put on the clown makeup. We have to blend in. God, what a hellish experience to have to put two completely fake people through. Lord alive. Hold on. There we go. God, yeah. The silliest dude on the continent is also somehow the guy with the most resources amassed under his army. That being said, like, we joke, but having that kind of, you know, it's kind of an interesting leadership style, being the guy who is, like, the silliest at all times. I feel like that, that would create a very inclusive kind of culture in your workplace. Your workplace being the post-apocalypse, I mean. Because then if, you, if the boss guy is a complete clown, you don't really get to judge anybody else. You know, it's, it's like, you know, we are, we're, we're already serving... El Clown Supremo, why why do we need to get up all, all up in each other's business? Why do we need to judge each other? We're already we're already the biggest fools in the room, no matter what we do. So we might as well just treat each other with dignity. It would be so funny if that's like why everybody thought he did it, and then one day he's like, just like, I do this because I like it. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> God. You guys thought I dressed lame? <laughs> like, he's, like, teary-eyed behind his, like, gigolo mask. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, anyway. Moving on. We do need to make this truck, somehow. I was thinking of using primitives. Okay. So we're going to make a cube. Back out a little bit. We need to put this like level with her. Okay. Light source, kind of putting it from here. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, put this together like this, put it forward like this, put it backward like that, lower it a little bit. Okay, now, I don't know if the cattle catcher is better with, a, with the pyramid or with two planes. I think we're going to go for with planes. Okay, make this 45 degrees, copy and paste, make that 45 degrees. Okay, now move it out here. Perfect. Now make both of these a little bit like this. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay, we need to put these together like this. Kind of intersect them a little bit. We need to make these much smaller too. There we go. Hmm. You know, I think we can get a no, no, we couldn't get away with that actually. Hang on. Let me just put those back real quick. Okay, then we have the Well, we'll use a prism for wheels. We should do. Alright, put these around. I love geometry hour with pa Pablo Riza. Is it straight up? Yeah, it's straight up. Okay. I love the I love whenever our streams turn into fucking <laughs> banjo banjo kazooie nuts and bolts. I love whenever the streams turn into that one that thing that you can do in Breath of the Wild that I've never played. Oh hey Haro, how you doing? <laughs> I've never played Breath of the Wild. Or Tears of the Kingdom, I guess. That's where they made the, what do you call it? the geometry thing. Vibin, nice. Oh, we can put this a little further back. Yeah, just a little further back. We can widen it too. Make it just a tiny bit smaller though. Hang on, if we chose, if we elected to put all these on the ground, <clears throat> what would that do to, oh, we can't really do that, can we? Hmm. What if we just put this one on the ground? Okay, interesting. Okay, if that's the case, we can widen them a little bit and we expand them a little bit. Okay, we'll copy this one and then just bring it all the way back here. It's a little bit less far out than that, maybe. Yeah, there we go. You'll be able to see it just a little bit. Okay, then we copy and paste the cube, bring it back, thin it, make it a little bit narrower back here. This one? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think the best place to start would probably be the wheel. Of all the things that human invented, it is among the earliest. So it only seems fair. We have to be careful not to reinvent it, though. I've heard that, that that's bad for some reason. The hexagon. <laughs> it, would be, it would be a little too cruel to give her completely hexagonal wheels, I think. Uninventing sounds better. Hmm. I don't know about that one. I kind of like the wheels. A lot of the things that I like in my life have wheels on them. Okay, we can simplify this line. Okay, we can flatten this line out and then expand it right here. Okay, we need to make it a little bit further up so that it can actually clip through this and register. There we go. Clip Studio is very finicky about some of its line widths and how they intersect. Thankfully, in a lot of other respects, it's quite reasonable. Okay, we'll just bring this up here. 
Oh, I am getting a notice that we're getting an ad anytime soon, so, so brace yourselves. Okay. It's a bit of low profile here. Let me just shrink that a little more. Whoop! Didn't need to do that. Okay, then just one last little one here. And we can have a little bit of a thingy majig here. Some kind of hubcap design. Come on, bud. There we go. Okay, then we'll tear it out like that. No, something about that doesn't seem right. Hang on. I need to copy and paste this first. Then put it up here. Come on, bud. Just let me drag you. There we go. Same thing that a farmer says to a plow that doesn't really want to work. All right, here we go. Okay. Let me just shrink this down a little bit. We actually need to bring the wheel up on the original diagram. I also want to do a little something with the nose here a little bit. There we go. Just to find it a little more. Okay, as I was saying with the wheel, let's actually thicken the lines on the wheel a little bit as they go round and round. Okay. Okay, we will. A quick stroke right there. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's a quick question. When you were a kid, did you ever have like a dream of finding like buried treasure? Did you like go out with your in your backyard or something with like a little trowel and try to like dig something up and you only got like a few inches deep before you were like, ah, this sucks, I'm gonna go back inside. <laughs> I mean, I did that. I don't know if that's a universal experience at all. It turns out that a construction crew in Japan actually lived out that exact same dream very recently. It, they were essentially digging up underneath an old house. And when they dug up the house, they actually found a stash of really old coins buried underneath there. I'm talking that these coins were like... In the BCs, the oldest of them, and the newest of them is from like uh, 1265 or something, 1260s, mid-1260s, mid which is kind of insane. That's really old for coins, I feel. I don't, I don't have a good gauge on how old coins can be, but I feel like that's fairly old. Th th those coins are old as hell. Yeah. I read about like I read more about like when those coins might have been buried. It turns out that they might have been buried during the Kamakura period, which was this, you know, pretty boring time in Japanese history. All that happened was the establishment of the fucking shogunate and some other stuff too. <laughs> but the shogunate thing kind of uh kind of stole the rest of those things lightning. <laughs> yeah, off the top of my head, I remember uh, I remember skimming the Wikipedia article. Yeah, nothing too major, clearly. <laughs> me, when I, me when I'm a dude who doesn't know what the Shogun is. <laughs> like, me when I'm like a nobleman who doesn't know what the Shogun is just yet. <laughs> He's like, honey, have you come look at this? They're, they're saying they're establishing something called a Shogun. Oh, how positively dreadful. You know, and whatever the 
equivalent of like an old ancient Japanese stuffy British voices. I don't know. I guess I would use like the waga pronoun or something. Anyway, uh, some other stuff that happened during the time. I, I think it was like the a school of Buddhism was founded, and oh yeah, the the Mongols invaded twice. <laughs> They got they got they got low diffed by a windstorm both times appropriately enough to the character that we're making. Shame though, or maybe not so much. It depends on who you ask. I think. I, I I'm just saying I I kind of wanted to see what I'd like to see the Mongolians and the samurai fight at least a little bit. Horses versus dudes with swords. Who would win? <laughs> well, historically, the guys with horses did actually, so I don't think it would be much of a mystery. Much of a mystery, you know. That death battle episode would take like thirty minutes at most. God, remember death battle? Happy for you though. Or sorry that happened. <laughs> Me when I'm an ally to the Mongolian Empire and I hear the, the Kublai, Kai, Kublai Khan's voice got low diffed by a windstorm. <laughs> oh, God. All right, I need to make these cubes less tall. So I'm going to just... There we go. Okay. Let's make the fluff on the front part here first. You know what would, would kind of work, actually? Oh, right. We need to make sure... Hmm. It's a little hard. Or actually, maybe no, it isn't. Hang on, maybe we can just kind of expand this uh, this operation here. Yeah, okay. There we go. This works. Okay, we can raise these parts here. Actually, we need to keep this part. We'll have the little loudspeaker here. Okay, then with the little thing a bit jig in the middle here. That doesn't seem right. Hang on. Let's try this again. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can double this as a light. Hmm. Okay, we can erase that. And then cut that around. There we go.
Hmm. <sighs> Something's bugging me about the wheel. We might have to reinvent this sucker. <laughs> the exact thing I... The exact situation I didn't want to be in. Fuck. All right. Well, it can't be helped. Maybe we can get away with cheating it by just fucking around with the ankles a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Good enough. Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, we wanted this to have a little bit of a wind flap here. Or a little flap here. And then this can go down like this. Actually, hmm, at a lower angle would be better. Okay, yeah, then we move a little bit farther. It's a shame I don't have enough time to squeeze a quick 3D modeling session into this. Well, I guess I technically did, making the model like this, or making the kind of approximation of it like this. I need to bring these in a little bit more. There we go. Oh yeah. Speaking of reinventing the wheel, or rather inventing something completely horrible as opposed to the wheel. I don't know. I don't know what people's personal stances are on wheels. Are they are they like wheels? Hot or not? <laughs> I don't know if wheels are a particularly offensive topic. <laughs> in any case. Guess what new fucking dystopian technology we've invented. Amazon is rolling out these office on-site security drones. They look like those little WALL-E robots. You know the one that like kept cleaning stuff up behind WALL-E? They look a little bit like that. What do these flavor bottles look like? Hang on. Shaved ice flavor bottles. They're called like Astro or something. Okay, yeah, now I remember. I just need to make one decent one and then I can just copy and paste it. Do you think that I shaved ice on this truck is actually, like, any good? Like, given, given the propensities of this woman a, a, as far as we've observed, I want to say that it's good, but, like... <laughs> I, I don't know if, like, juggling the two passions like that is going to be... beneficial for the flavor of the actual product. Anyway, I was talking about the fucking Astro Robots that Amazon is making. They're so, they're kind of funny looking and they're they're like little I mentioned I, I made the comparison to like these Wally -E robots and that's still very accurate. More than anything, I want these things to suck, and more than that, I want somebody to upload within like days of them rolling out. I want somebody to upload footage of them from the perspective of the machine, of it being punted by some dude who just wants to get like a drink after hours at work. Like I just want some disgruntled dude in like a in like a tie and a shirt to just smack this thing into the str across the room 
field goal touchdown style. That's all I want to see. Correct response to robots from Amazon, I think. Yeah. We already give them a lot of shit, but I say we don't give them enough. Mm, no, something about this doesn't seem right. I'll just leave it as this one here. Okay, we'll make the little hatch here, and that way we'll have avoided needing to draw the roof perspective of this thing, which is, I think, a smart move, all things told. Let me also make a secondary grill here for the sheep's nostrils. There we go. Or for the car sheep's nostrils? Hmm. Cowcatcher's nostrils. The cowcatcher's nostrils sounds like a Dark Souls item. It sounds like some kind of relic. It sounds like something that the British like the British court system still uses. It it sounds like an ancient medieval torture de torture device, <laughs> like a cat of nine tails. I would easily believe if I never if I didn't know the name of a cat of nine tails and you told me it was called like a cow catcher's nostril, I would believe you. I mean, we already have the iron bull, the iron maiden, or the the brazen bull. Yeah, it's the brazen bull, not the iron bull. The iron bull is something else, I think. I don't remember what the iron bull is. How far back would you have to go in time to ask ask somebody what the Super Bowl was and they wouldn't know? Because that was like a that that's been a fairly popular sporting event for some time, I think. I know that we have like the literal numbers of the uh, Super Bowls in their titles, but I not I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. I'm not a sports guy. <laughs> when was the Super Bowl founded? Let's see here. Super Bowl. Annual League Championship game. What was the last, first one? Since 1966. So we would have to go to at least like the 50s to get a good kind of non... A good kind of objective response to the name Super Bowl. Like how do they... They, did they market this that at all? Like, do we know what they were thinking with the name Super Bowl? I feel like we should learn. Because I feel like Super Bowl is just not a very good name. For a sporting event. It doesn't... The thing about bowl, right, is that it has the connotation to the roundness. The kind of round and stableness that is not to be expected of a high-octane energy sporting action event. I know bowl is used for things other than the Super Bowl, though, weirdly, like sports things. Huh. I didn't know that. Interesting. Hmm, I wonder if that, became if that came before or after the naming of the Super Bowl. Like, was it a... Like, who, which, one the, which was this chicken and which was the egg? In this in this scenario, 
I know belts from wrestling and from boxing actually came from this ritual of tying like some material to yourself to kind of like signify who you were, who you were affiliated with. And then that kind of developed into like the tradition of having like a winner's belt. It's specifically a football thing. The plot thickens. Oh. I feel like football as a football, the American sport, not the not the one also called soccer, does tend to have the funniest names for things. I mean, what who came up with the name touchdown? Who came up with the name in North America, a bowl game, or simply bowl, is one of a number of postseason college football games. Huh. Something to chew on right there. With the 1923 Rose Bowl, it began to be played at the newly completed Rose Bowl Stadium. And thus, the, name, the contest itself became known as a Rose Bowl game. The name Bowl, to describe games, that thus comes from the Rose Bowl Stadium. Huh. Interesting. I would never have guessed that, actually. I know the Rose Bowl is kind of a big deal. Although my knowledge of stadiums isn't very, uh, isn't the sharpest. Okay, now we need to make the shaved ice machine, the parasol, and then, then we're ready to start coloring. I had heard of the Rose Bowl before, and that's how I knew it was something else at least. Yeah. And then we, we decided to call one Super. <laughs> you see, you're not dealing with an ordinary bowl anymore. I'm the legendary Super Bowl. <sighs> <laughs> We should have let Goku play American football. We, I'm not saying it would have been a good idea. I'm saying it would have been funny. He's going Super Bowl! <laughs> All right. How do we tie the computer to this shaved ice machine in the most undignified way possible? I'm thinking duct tape. Uh, we also need to make this the little um, weather vane machine up here near the near the front. That's fine. We can just scale it up a little. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, like, weirdly large attractions, the coolest statue... I, I've mentioned before that I took a little trip to Ottawa, and I got to see that giant metal spider statue they have there, one called Mamang. I learned recently that in France, they have a completely unrelated but equally cool 400-foot-long, which is, like, 120 meters for people who use metric, which is me, by the way. I use metric, but I'm, I'm <laughs> leading with feet. <laughs> anyway. There's a 120 meter long statue of like a serpent's bones on this beach in France. Which is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's literally the statue. Its name is literally something like the serpent of the ocean. It was made by this one Chinese French student who I think deliberately chose to invoke the idea of like a dragon by making it that big. There's a lot of different interpretations for you can make for a piece like that. But, I, but one of the ones that I saw that kind of spoke to me was this idea that with like environmental damage, right? We're not just kind of destroying the natural world, but also the elements that make it fantastical as well. 
literally i just think that the idea of like a giant metal snake sat snake bone statue is like fucking awesome it's a big one too let's see lower that Okay, and then one back here. Let's smooth out this bump here because that doesn't seem quite right. There we go. Okay. Now the laptop. If I had more time to render this, I would turn this into like those frilly tassels that they put on everything during like tin like uh tinsel. I'd make this kind of like floofy part up here made out of tinsel because I feel like that would actually manage to weather stuff pretty great. All right, let's me bring back real quick the laptop reference if I can find that. This one Hi, Ben. Oh, thank you for the hydrate and the posture check. I should take a sip. Yeah, thank you. Honestly, this... Making this card has been much more painless than I first thought it would be. Man. Thinking about that message though, like right going back to the giant metal snake statue. I think it also kind of goes the other way around, you know, like the, we talk a lot about like man-made horrors beyond our comprehension, right? We talk a good game about that. But I do think that if you told like a medieval present from like the 1400s about acid rain, I think they would just never leave their house again. <laughs> Like not even not even that it happens sometime in the future, just that you told them about it in concept, they would like never leave their house again. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, that kind of goes like this. Okay, we can copy and paste that effect here. Oh God. You know how like when you see somebody stretch, it kind of like makes you want to, makes you want to stretch too? Whenever I see a, a computer, I'm gonna say, this reminds me a little bit too much of a, like a crucifixion. <laughs> It makes me, it gives me uncomfortably close vibes to like somebody being put in like a draw like somebody being like drawn and quartered. I'm not gonna lie. It stresses me out seeing computers be be like contorted like this. But it's funny and it fits the vibes, so I'll I hate these vegetables, but I'll do it for you, Lord. <laughs> Warcraft. Orcs and humans, huh? What do you reckon? That was like a like a real-time strategy game? I feel like it has to be, right? Like, I feel like that's probably like one of the spin-offs or branch games in StarCraft. God, I remember StarCraft being so huge as as like an eSport for so long. It probably still is, to be honest. I don't... I, I don't I don't keep up with the scene very often. You know, outside of fighting games. 
That's the original Warcraft there. And, uh... All right, let me just... I'm gonna just make a square here. Or wait, no, I can't actually do that, can I? I can't make a square where I can manage the... Actually, a square probably... No. Eh, maybe. I've already made one, so why not? Yeah, StarCraft is still pretty big, even if generally less so nowadays, yeah. I mean, we still use... I feel like some people still use phrases like Zerg Rush, which come from StarCraft. That, that might just be a case of, like, lingo breaking containment. Let's see. Man. I, I, I have a hard time vibing with most esports scenes outside of, like, fighting games because i feel like they they take themselves very seriously like it, that's not to say that the fight in the fgc doesn't take itself too seriously sometimes but some but like sometimes it's like sometimes i see like the esports shit that goes on outside of this they look like <laughs> they look like spy commandos brood war competitions still go in south korea starcraft 2 is still happening in a bit larger and of more worldwide sense neat Let's see. Okay, we need to stretch this out a little bit like this. Then... I am wondering how I'm going to, like, justify... Wait. Oh my god, what if I had, like, struts? What if we just had, like, metallic hooks? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes! Still love watching Brood War a lot, honestly, but also looking forward to where most of the StarCraft devs went after Blizzard sort of cleared most of them out. A bunch of them made a new company and are making a new RTS song called Stormgate. Nice! Ah, oh, man, it's always nice to know that even though the devs can get screwed by the companies in a lot of cases, whenever they, like, go out and chase their dreams, that's so cool. That, like, whenever you see them still doing their thing, still run, still going on it out there, it gives you, like, a reassurance, right? That's the interesting thing I find with, like, you know, the things you like moving on and moving on without you is nothing new, right? I remember I was reading this webcomic called Akewood a long time ago, where it was covering, like, the time, like, they really want to be doing this, even if the capitalism, yeah. Like, there was this one Akewood comic where they were, that, that kind of ran during the death of Michael Jackson, right? And somebody was like, that, and that guy was your generation's Elvis. And, you know, when that Elvis goes away, that's like, that, means that, that means that, like, that experience that you had w with their content, with their products, with, their, with, like, the feelings and emotions they gave you also kind of died. Because, you know, they, you know you'll never be able to experience it that way again because the person who made it is gone. And that was a very sad sentiment, and it is true, you know? In a lot of cases, you... Like, a part of you dies whenever, like, something that you really love goes out of run or out of print or breaks up or ends in general, right? But I think, like, an interesting upswing to, like, this absurdly fast-paced capitalism that we're kind of go going through is that it's actually very difficult to permanently kill something. You know, be that ambition, be that good things, bad things, ambitions, dreams, it's actually very difficult to permanently get rid of. Because, 
you know, those people, you know, people keep shuffling others around. It, it becomes like this more ordinary task of keeping people not only together, but keeping those ideas together. So it's interesting. It's interesting seeing like the effects of it. It's almost inspiring in a way that like this kind of long time fear we've had of things ending is kind of assuaged by the fact that now things are expected to end so suddenly and quickly and without a warning that we've actually kind of become experts <laughs> at continuing them. We've become much better at that. It's kind of interesting. It's it I I think it's interesting. Like, you know, we have much more much more frequently we have we see spiritual successors that do well. You know, people talk shit about Mighty Number no. 9 for example, but like Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. That's a game that did really well for itself. You know, as, as a game that took a lot of inspiration from Jet Set Radio. Ty, uh, uh, Cy, bomb, not some Bomb Rush for Funk again. Um, Hi-Fi Rush as well. You know, that, that, that game saw on draft really quickly earlier. That's not an indie game by any means. I don't think it is, at least. I don't, I'm pretty sure Hi-Fi Rush isn't an indie game. But a lot of people, when it came out, they were like, we had no idea this thing was coming out. It dropped on us like a, like a bridge. And it has a lot of that energy of like early PlayStation 2 games that just focus on being insane, goofy fun without needing to really deliver on anything else. So I think like, despite the fact that there are a lot of limitations, you know, there are some very obvious downsides to our current model of economy. <laughs> I don't, you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> It's still interesting to see how the creative spirit just kind of keeps developing and rocking, despite all that. People who work on emulators and stuff doing extremely cool work with stuff too, making sure it can be preserved even with low, without companies are. That too as well. Media preservation has become... Accessible might not be the right word, but much more appreciable in this day and age. You know, I I think it's still it's still gonna be a little while before we can radicalize people into agreeing that like the current model is insane and isn't right. But I think we're kind of there. We're almost there. You know, with with Netflix being the way it is, with how most things are the way they are, I I don't think it's gonna take much to like radicalize people at this point. We are like one live service game away from uh, one live service game entering cancellation state. From developing like a like a cyber unibomber. <laughs> Feels like we're getting pretty close at this point. Mm -hmm. The clock's a ticking. <laughs> like I feel like one day a, a, an Epic Games Store title is just gonna like shut down support, and three days later, some dude is going to like publicly sword fight Todd Sweeney or whatever his the fuck Tim Sweeney or whatever the fuck his name is on a rooftop with katanas I kind of want to see that actually let's make that be the future huh you know i think i think maybe not for honor but maybe for dignity we should bring back sword duels I feel like if, if you know, people often take the, the stance that if corporations are like on paper, you know, the, the entire point of corporation, the name corporation derives from the fact that corporate, I should save my work. I should really, uh, yeah, there we go. Save my work. All right, we're good. We're cool. Disaster narrowly averted. <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna drink some water. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, we should we should, somebody should sword fight Todd and Tim Sweeney or whatever the fuck his name is. I keep mixing it up. I keep mixing it up because of Sweeney Todd or whatever the fuck his name is, the demon barber. I remember seeing the I remember seeing that movie 
not not even seeing that movie itself but seeing like the cover for that movie because my brother wanted to watch it and we bought it for him i used to get very easily freaked out by horror stuff i still do not as much actually these days i gotta say for somebody who is a self-proclaimed giant pussy i actually kind of like horror quite a bit it's grown on me quite a lot maybe i've grown a tolerance or something I think being exposed to like 300 billion Five Nights at Freddy's edits throughout the course of my life, not even actively participating in it, but just as background radiation across the rest of the internet, I think that's done something to me. Not to sound ungrateful, by the way. I'm actually quite grateful that, that horror doesn't have as much of a chokehold on me as it used to. It's nice not being scared of shit. In most situations. Big disclaimer, it's nice not being scared of stuff in most situations. You should still be scared of at least a couple of things here and there, I think. I think that's perfectly healthy. But, you know, it, like horror media, it's fine to not be scared of, I think. I, th I think you're not losing out on much if you're not scared of horror, mo of horror movies. Here we go. Okay, then right here. Did I make the bells on the horns? I didn't. I'm going to make them slightly... <sighs> I like the idea of making them huge like that, but I don't know about that with the wheels. Or actually, you know what? Fuck it, we ball. Fuck it, we bell. Dong. <laughs> I'm imagining the Taco Bell. <laughs> the Taco Bell dong. <laughs> All right. And then I wasn't I was only vaguely aware of the Taco Bell dong until I started watching these Guilty Gear streams and and had that as a kind of like counter noise. Or heard that as a counter noise. Taco Bell wasn't really popular where I'm from. We didn't have a whole lot of them. See. Let's make a bell over here too. Why not? Okay, there we go. Okay, now we'll make the little stickers for the ice cream. And then we can get started on the coloring. Please, let me get started on the coloring. We did do everything, right? Yeah, we've got both, basically. We forgot the back of the truck. Fuck it, I'm going to make this a push cart. Fuck it. <laughs> She's just going to haul this thing. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Go, Grandma. <laughs> Listen, you have to know when to pick your battles. <laughs> All right, then we'll have the the 
We'll, ha we'll have another sticker here. We'll have my face, my goofy face up here. Okay, then for the ice cream, we have the Cornetto, the classic. Okay, we'll have my Doofy face up here. I wonder if people are going to be weird about me putting myself here as an ice cream. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it'll be big enough for anybody to spot easily. It'll be a little bit of an Easter egg. Precisely as planned. Okay, that'll move up like this. Always got to have some Easter eggs, that's right. And we can just have like a normal ice lolly there. And we'll have the kind of like section here. Because I feel like there needs to be a small intersection there. Gotcha. And then I, I, I suppose we can have a wheel right here in the middle as well. Let me actually just copy and paste this wheel and just move it up. Good enough. That'll do, sheep. That'll do. I need to make this line a little thicker. Okay. Are we cool? Is that everything? The logo, right. All right, hang on. We need one more thing. All right, cracking, cracking my knuckles for this one. I really don't want to leave this as just like plain lorn art. I might just have to do some very simplistic coloring. All right, we'll bump up the stabilization and use a new raster layer, or vector layer, rather. Stabilization maybe a little less than that. Okay. Okay, there we go. Then the other horn. Just very carefully connecting these two.
We're going to have to push this one back. There we go. What the? Whatever. Okay, then that's going to keep going like this. Okay, we do the two little leggies. I'm very pleased with how nice these vector lines are coming out. Perfect. We can just copy and paste that for the the other one. Hmm, that can't be right. Good enough. Okay, I should save. It's a cute little tail. Okay. Making the rough shape of a bee. Hmm. Yeah, the numbers on the logo are the thing that I was most anxious about. It, it'll definitely have to go behind the horn on the sheep here. The sheep is kind of the main start of the show here. Who needs numbers, right? <laughs> okay, we'll change this around like this. Okay. Did we have anything else we needed doing? Who needs numbers when they're sheep? Huh. This is the natural prog this is a natural kind of conclusion to the thought of counting sheep. We kind of do need numbers for sheep, is the thing. Come to think of it if you think about it that way. Numbers are rather important, aren't they? I I take back what I've said. <laughs> You need you need numbers in order to count the sheep. There's something fucked up about this one. <laughs> Hang on, maybe if I make it smaller. Hmm. Okay, we'll cut it up like this. Hmm. Oh wait, I think I see the issue here. There we go. Hey, 
And then we'll have a little bell here for the sheep. Big brain moment. Let's go. That'll, that'll fill up the white space quite nicely. There we go. Nice. Okay. You can take away the reference here. Okay, we will make the... This is supposed to be like the Highland sheep, right? How did they get them that Cheeto, that kind of she Cheeto color? <laughs> Orange Highland Sheep. Why that thing so orange? <laughs> the mysteries of the sheep. That's true. The little fluffy bastards will know things we never will. And that's their privilege. Aspies of, aspies of nature. Okay. Then a little, then a nice, more strong yellow for the middle here. What if we made like the thirteen be like the? the <laughs> What if like the logo here is like the sheep got peeled in like a 13 number shape? That would be kind of a messed up thing to do. Well, no, I think the sheep doesn't really care if you, if you like shear the number 13 on it. It has, it has other shit to worry about, I think. As an animal. Hang on, let me find a good kind of color grading we can use for this. Oh, this one, this one's nice. Uh, did that work? There we go. Hmm. I'm not feeling any of these just yet. Maybe this one? Yeah, I think this one works. All right, we'll put this in a folder. Then we'll put that folder in a box. And we will mail the box to ourselves. And we'll crush them with a hammer. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right. And I think for the last touch, we'll make the main color of this part be kind of like a darker brown. There we go. All right, we'll copy and paste that, flatten it, turn it into hang on, convert layer into an image material layer. And then there from the object mode, we can actually tile it automatically, which is a really cool thing that Clip Studio Paint can do that I don't see enough people take advantage of. There we go. We're going to use this as... Hmm. I think... Okay, this is good, but we need to make it a little bit more spread out. And I'm going to make a couple of copies of these. I'm also going to make one without the 13 on it. And I think that one's the one that's going to go on the lady's shirt. Oops. Perdóname. There we go. The, the <laughs> this is a much rarer version of the cheap. The solid sheep. The metal sheep solid. I kind of want to give it like an orange background. 
Hang on. I've got an idea. All right, we'll need to use the square tool, the rectangle tool. Limited edition sheep. Yeah, that's a wrong layer. In the middle, in the middle. Shrink both of these suckers down. Yeah, the kind of, this kind of cream square in particular, I want to shrink that down. Because that way, hang on. All right, let's merge these together. And then we do our little trick with the tiling. Rule of frame, layer settings. File object selection. Wait, no, hang on. Is this the right menu? Convert layer, here we go. All right, going back to the object tool. Okay. Yeah, we're finally getting into it. Now we're now we're gonna start coloring it. I did want to give her some gray hair as well, so I think that's gonna have to come in at this point. Okay, there we go. Give me just a couple minutes more. We're in the home stretch here, people. Now all I got to do is to not fumble this bag. Oh, wow. I, I didn't even intend for this, but the black nitrate gloves actually work really well with the hoof motif. Rice bag stays winning. All right, we'll make these clear white. I, I'm not even going to pretend that I did that on purpose. That's just that's just kind of like natural symmetry there. Mm, that blue is bothering me. I want to make it a slightly different color. Well, we can worry about that later. We'll have plenty of time to figure out stuff for like gradient mapping. Well, no, we won't, but we'll have some time. We won't have plenty of time, but we'll have some time. Hmm. All right, we'll use this color for the cup as well. Got to do the boots, too. The Crocs. The all-important Crocs. We'll, do, we'll do, make them the same color as the nitrate gloves. We'll use this white color for the soles of the boots and for the metal on the zippers as well and then i feel like we need a nice okay the we'll use the white for the hat too actually hang on this hat is low-key giving doug demodome vibes if, if the, his hat were like reasonably sized these bees have like black horns no they have kind of like Tan horns. 
They have like bone uncolored horns. Let's see that for these things too. Dug them a dome, normal mode. <laughs> Dug them a dome, a low on four. <laughs> Dug them a th dome, non threatened state. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to tell you guys this, but I was beating the crap out of Butch Hartman the other day, and I, he, I, he let it slip that apparently Dug them a dome only has to had turned big when he's scared like a bird. Pretty nice suitor, I think. Maybe like a darker green, like an olive color. Okay. Then, in retrospect, it might actually be quite difficult to, hang on. No, actually, never mind. None of this is difficult to me. I'm the, mo I'm the most, I'm the most powerful man alive. <laughs> Not the most pow powerful man, period. There are some ghosts out there who would really kick my ass if they were pressed. It was like it's like it's like Goku after he trained in the uh, in the underworld during the Boo saga. <laughs> hmm. What color should I make the apron? Like maybe a. Okay, we've got the blue. We've got the yellow. We need one in the middle here. Like maybe like a green. Ooh, like her eyes. That'd be so. That that'd be really cute, actually. Hmm. It's not. Coming together as well as I'd hoped, but we'll throw some uh, what what you gonna call a uh, There's so many more guys to draw from who are dead that are alive that are alive currently. That's true. There's an entire franchise based around that concept. <laughs> now my my ass better stay in the mortal realm <laughs> or I'm finished. <laughs> Let's see. Right, I did promise ha hairy arms. Actually, we can probably do this on a different layer with a very small amount of stroke. Dude, imagine, imagine if you're, like, rolling up into the underworld, ready to fucking beat the shit out of the nearest person who can tell you where Ronald Reagan is so you can get a shot at him, and you suddenly hear boss music, and you turn it around, and it's none other than the fate incarnation of fucking Thomas Edison. <laughs> I would be scared. I would be fighting for my life, dog. <laughs> I would be... <laughs> nah, nah. No, nah, I'd be I'd be done. I'd be cooked. Not me. No, nah, you you need a different rice bag for that job. <laughs> Actually, cut to think of it, there is a fate guy who is like associated with rice, right? Like a uh, Tawar Tota. Probably did not pronounce that right. Yeah, he carries around like rice bales, I think. That's the guy I would summon in a Grail War War for sure. <laughs> That or a berserker. I don't know. <laughs> I like the. I saw the other day like this. Um, fucking <laughs> this one Twitter game, right? Where like people would be like, "What cl what RPG class would I be if I if I was like a D and D class character or if I was in an RPG?" And like, 
I wanted to say I'd be a monk, but like I know in my deepest of hearts that I would be the fu- I would be a barbarian. <laughs> I know if, I know for a fact that I, that my my ass would be a berserker or a barbarian or whatever equivalent that it, that has. I need to do this on a separate layer so I can blend it better. Where's the best? Where's the blender br blender brush? Okay, then we have another brush time. More brush time. Yeah, the closer it is to her head, the more it goes gray. I think that's the best way to do it. Then like this, then the last one here. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Hmm. Oh, that's why, there we go. We'll have this middle part be like this. There we go. Right, I wanted to make the ice character here. I should probably do this on the layer that where I'm actually using the coloring. Hang on. Yeah, that's good. Alright, where's the... there we go. We need like the gouache brush. And we need to thin it out a little bit too. What did the character price look like again? It was like the... okay. It was... hang on. I remember this. I can do this from memory. Watch this. Okay. I better not do it from memory, actually. Hang on. Character for ice. Oh! Interesting. Okay, so I, I was kind of uh, beefing it a little bit. Hang on. Check this out. Okay, so it's like one stroke, two stroke, three stroke, four stroke. Okay. Let me make this a little bit more red. Now, for some reason, I just imagined her doing so the fucking raging demon on someone, and and instead of like the character for heaven, the character for ice pops up on her back like this. <laughs> Silly. Okay. <clears throat> back to serious business. Never mind. Never mind that silly, that goofiness. Back anyway. Back to work. <laughs> All right. We will make the main body of this part be the color of the shirt here. Have this part be here, have this part. Actually, let's make this the black metal that we've been using. And we'll make the actual weather vane. Hmm. Uh, 
There we go. We're doing pretty well for ourselves with this fight only using three colors. Mm, no, we'll need to use this for the wheels. All right. Well, at least like a decent, a nice yellow. We can turn on, hang on, there we go. Let's use the ones that we made from the logo for the bell. We'll need a dark, a slightly darker one or a slightly different pitched one for the wheels, at least. So it doesn't confuse with the one for the ribbon. Red is said to be an auspicious color. We'll use that. Okay, this one here. Okay, we'll switch out the color. We'll do a little switch out here. We'll make this part the... Yeah, okay. A little sneaky switcheroo. Okay. We'll make... The ham radio, the color for this. Make the antenna pure white to differentiate it a little more. Have the knobs on the radio be this color. Oh. We'll also make the walkie-talkie itself. Oh my god, that's so tiny, though. We made, we made the walkie-talkie a little bit too small. That's not... That's more of a... That's more of a... Steppy whisper. Than a walkie-talkie. <laughs> I guess it's just a receiver, huh? A walkie-talkie is, like, independent of the radio unit, I, I reckon. How are we for time? Oh, wow, we are carrying on pretty late. All right, that's fine, though. We, we, we won't take much longer for this. Hopefully. Possibly. No promises. I don't think I've used the horn color in, on enough stuff. But that's fine. It, it, can, it can serve as a sort of highlight. Actually, no, we can use it for the handle at the back here. Having it look to be made out of wood when it's probably made of metal is kind of charming as well. Come on, bud. Smally talkie. <laughs> God. Nice one. All right. Uh, this computer has no charging points. I ports. I will not let that bother me. <laughs> Okay. Cool. 
Computer clearly has custom porn on the back to plug directly into the stand. You are so big brained. Nice one. We'll do we'll do that then. I'll give myself a nice green background. We'll give the, this thing down here a, uh, an energetic red background. We'll give the ice cream sandwich a calm blue background. I'm, I'm, I'm a very unambitious pe person. Pabs Ice, that's right. I'm a very unambitious person. So when I learned that there were flavors besides vanilla available in ice cream sandwiches, I lost my fucking mind. I was like, you were telling me it gets better than this? <laughs> it blew my tiny brain as a kid. I, I still don't tend to go for those very often, but it's good. I'm glad that, to know that they're there, if that makes sense. What does Pabst Pop taste like? Hmm. Probably, they, probably mochi flavored. Mochi flavor with like vanilla gumdrops. Also, I want to change the color of that rice. That looks a little bit too parboiled. <laughs> Actually, we'll use that for the cone over here. I did default to thinking coconut. Ooh, coconut might be interesting. I'm not the biggest batter for coconut, but I, but I, I have eaten a coconut or two in my time. All right, it goes red, orange, yellow, I need to find a secondary metal color. We'll use the handlebar again. Green. And blue. You know. I, I don't know about you guys. I don't know what your personal tier lists are for whatchamacall, um, shaved ice flavors. But for me, whatever flavor is bluest always sweeps. Something about it. It doesn't taste like anything in particular, but it, tastes, it sure does as fuck tastes blue, and my god. That's as much as we can ask for in this godforsaken world. <laughs> I don't think we think hard enough. Hold on. I realized I just painted the entire background. That's not good. The cool, refreshing taste of blue. That, sh that shit should have been Gatorade's tagline. I don't know what... Does Gatorade have a slogan? For the life of me, I can't think of Gatorade's slogan. It has to have one, but like I don't... Off the top of my head, for the life of me, I can't remember it. I know Bark's root beer has like something, some shit like it's drinkable or something. Hang on. Does Gatorade have slogan? Empowering performance and hydration is one of them, apparently. Win from within is the one for 2023. Apparently it's like annual. Huh. Somehow that's the most sensible answer I could have thought of. It makes sense that they wouldn't keep one for too, for too long. I'm pleasantly surprised at how reasonable that answer was. I think I would have gotten a little bit too excited if, it, if they didn't turn out to have any slogan. Okay. 
Wait, are we done? Wait, no, we haven't finished the hovercaps. Uh, not just yet. Okay, now I think we're done, though. Holy shit. <laughs> we, we do need, still need to put the logo on here. Hang on. Bu, 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 bu. Object tool. Stop tiling my boy. There we go. Just need to move this up here and over. Perfect. Okay. And for the shirt, I'll just do a little bit of a, um, shall we say, compromise. So I'll call it gamut, this one here. I, I probably have like some kind of floral pattern on here, don't I? Rose, no. Cherry, no. Come on, I have to have some kind of floral pattern. I have handprints, but that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Buttons, ruled line, no matching. No, do I not have any flowers in here besides roses? Oh, we can do with cherry blossoms. What the hell? Sticky yellow and pink handprints. That'd be so. That'd be kind of cute, actually. Hmm. Oh, I see how it has to be. Okay, so this one, and then we'll have this kind of like color here for this one. And then we... There we go. Yeah, that'll do. Now, all we got to do is play around with the colors a little bit. Because I, I'm not entirely pleased with the color scheme just yet. Normal correction, gradient map. I love how the arm hair is just stubbornly staying the same, though, <laughs> because it's on a separate layer. <laughs> Much like in real life. Only lasers can get rid of that shit. Or was it electricity? I, I don't know. I love my arm hair very much, so I, I'm very much attached to it in both the metal, literal and kind of emotional sense. Hmm. All right, one. Well, last couple of things. I'm interested in this one. This one makes it... This one gives genuine Ronald McDonald vibes. I feel like this would be Ronald McDonald's war chariot. <laughs> With this paint job. Like, if you unlock the skin, that's what, like, what it's called in the menu. Flaming hat. <laughs> oh, this one's very peaceful. All right, let's try this pinkish one. See how that one tickles our fancy. Ooh, okay, th this one's a winner. I'm just gonna take the pants color re real quick as well and uh, change that around a little bit. No, not more towards green, probably more towards the blue of anything. Okay, and then just a little bit of cross-hatching on the jeans to make it really pop. I want to learn how to draw really, really nice jeans, because sometimes I see the jeans that people make online, uh, that people draw online, I'm like, god damn. Like, I am, I am floored by it. 
Hmm. I covered it. Wait, no, hang on. What did I just do? Okay, now, now I remember. Maybe with, like, the spray brush? All right, I think I've got an idea for how to do these. I know there's some really good denim brushes, but I assume that's not what you mean. Yeah. I mean, denim brushes would be a good start, probably, just to kind of get a feel for it, but I'd like to know how to render it a little better. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, we're finished. All right. Oh, my God. All right, let's go find somebody to raid. <laughs> And then we'll, and then I'll take my turn to pass out. Yeah, who all is streaming right now? Path short study month? An insane idea that I'm not entirely opposed to. Hmm. Alright, uh, let's go raid, uh, JB, who is currently doing some pixel art stuff. As soon as I find my Twitch window. <laughs> There we go. All right. Uh, on Saturday, I'll be back with some more Sims 3. But in the meantime, take it easy. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you all later. Happy Friday. See you later. Bye.